This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. Uh, very glad that um, you can be listening to this conversation. Today, I have uh, with me Dr. Ilona Denisenko, who has uh, kindly agreed to uh, talk with us. She's the past president of IMHA, the International Maritime Health Association, and is a practicing physician. Uh, so, Alona, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and and uh, where you are sitting and uh, and how you're uh, how you're experiencing this crisis at this time? Hi, Jason. Uh, thank you, you know, for this invitation to participate in this really interesting, you know, discussion. Uh, to be frank, you know, it's uh, almost. Uh, every you know five or ten minutes I'm trying to explain something about the coronavirus and uh, it became more and more difficult because you know I think everyone became an expert now because it's so many information you know in the, you can find in the web and in before only really as specialists in virusology and practicing you know infection doctors knew about the family of coronaviruses now everybody even the kids you know i heard they start playing coronavirus you know in the yard because many you know the majority of schools and kindergartens are closed so the kids are trying to imagine uh, and you know it's interesting to hear they imagine the virus with a crowd and you know, things like that so I'm uh, a practicing physician and uh, it's half, 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 you know, I'm seeing uh, seafarers, I'm making research in uh, seafarers and uh, fishermen health. And uh, I also seeing the patients, the majority is from the expert community in Moscow. It's uh, embassy and businesses. Uh, it, among your seafarers patients, can, can you tell us a bit about what what their fears or concerns are related to the coronavirus and, 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 and how are they expressing those fears to you? Well, to be frank, the, the biggest fear is to lose the job or to stay without job for months, two or three, because in reality, we don't really know for how long this situation will last. Uh, the guys, uh, you know, the super is usually asking my advice what to do, but uh, during these days I saw only two in the face masks to, to walk into the, you know, the clinic, but the masks were old. I asked them how long they were wearing them. They replied that they already wearing them for one week. So I explained them that in this case, you know, the masks are completely used because you know they can spread more infection now that you know to protect them. if you've been in contact with your other colleagues in the uh, imha network uh what, what are what are some of the top concerns uh and uh, challenges that your colleague physicians uh port health physicians are facing uh around the world you know, it's really different and this varies from person to person. Some of them, they somehow try and scare not to get sick because, you know, they, uh, the people sometimes, you know, over 50 or 60 years old with some, you know, comorbid conditions. Uh, there is some doctors who are really on front lines, you know, trying to stop the spreading of the virus and examining, uh, you know, patients in the ports. Uh, there is some, uh, uh, now uh, they in quarantine. Some countries like Belgium, as far as I know, they introduce very interesting system, like 30% of the doctors staying at home while other 30 they are working because you know uh, it's quite a big risk for the health professionals to get sick as well and this is our uh, biggest fear uh, we uh, to lose uh, the health professionals and the doctors and this is also we very much afraid of outbreak when uh, the numbers of the disease will be spread uh, exponentially. That's why we're trying to uh, introduce different uh, measures, trying to slow it down. Because if it will be too many cases, this health system, even in a you know, really good health system, it, uh, it will collapse. Hmm. 
Mm. So we're trying really to avoid this now. So what what do you think in in terms of the 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 other health professionals that you work with around the world? What are some of the short term um, strategies that you're putting in place and more longer term strategies you're putting in place? Uh, uh, what uh, what are the sort of the key things that your uh, physician colleagues are doing to to slow things down or to mitigate against larger problems? Look, uh, right now, what uh, all the world is trying to do, it's, uh, as I mentioned before, the virus is spreading exponentially and we have to flatten the curve. So there is, uh, in general, there is a two, well, you know, possibilities, which is introduced in a different country. And uh, some, it's a forced quarantine, as it was in, uh, in China and they managed to close, you know, the entire cities. And the other, it's a social distancing, what we're introducing uh, in uh, Europe and in Russia now. In Europe, in some countries, you know, it's getting more and more strict that the people ask to stay at home. Uh, in the beginning, some people were stating as a, as a joke, but uh, it looked like that uh, even, you know, some Mediterranean countries, and I was really surprised by Spain, Italy, or Greece, that in two days, the, you know, the population really realized how important uh, these measures, and they're trying to stay at home, they're trying to keep distance in the supermarkets, uh, you know, you will not, in some places, you're not allowed to go from your home without any special permission or when you're going home and so. The same measures maybe will be introduced in Russia. Uh, right now, it's just that if you're arriving from the countries uh, uh, which is in a blacklist, you know, uh, it's uh, now it's China, India, uh, Iran, uh, and uh, almost the whole Europe. You have to go to the special uh, hotline and they lock yourself to the home quarantine for 14 days. And in case of you experience any kind of symptoms, you have to call uh, the doctors and the doctors will come uh, to your house and check you. So in, in many ports around the world, uh, seafarer centers and our seafarers missions are, are being closed just by uh, because of governments are, are uh, asking for restrictions. But there are still many places where uh, uh, some of our ship visitors can go to the ships to do deliveries of items, things like SIM cards or or uh, other packages. And I'm wondering if if you could give any if you were to give any advice for those who would be delivering those things, uh, what kind of advice would you give about uh, how to maintain social distancing and still do that service? Look, it was really uh, controversial recommendations concerning the masks, uh, the use of the mask. And the recent came from United States, I think today in the morning, that, you know, that uh, put um, uh, one of the specialists, uh, he recommended, because, you know, we now suspect a lot of younger yeah, youngsters, they, they can carry the virus and they can spread it without having any symptoms. Uh, so he said that uh, he's kind of overwhelming, you know, the previous recommendation that the mask should be worn only by sick persons or those who is contacted directly because you want to avoid the droplets. So most probably, you know, if you're going uh, to visit the ships, you know, some, you know, eyes and the face protection will be not bad. And I'm always, you know, for, but this is the kind of old recommendation that you have to wash your hands quite often. And you have to rub them approximately 20 seconds with a hot water and soap and uh, then to use different kind of alcohol of these antiseptic liquids. I just want to warn that some people, they really overdoing this and you apply these solutions every, you know, five or ten minutes, which can uh, lead to completely different effects because, you know, it's drying hands and uh, the skin is getting dry and uh, it can be damaged very quickly. 
And then we can get another, you know, conditions like, you know, the skin infection or something even worse. So you have really to be careful and maybe nobody is recommending this to apply also in the end some moisturizer or cream to the hands, to, you know, to protect your hands from really dryness. So then it's good, uh, uh, first, uh, as you know, that uh, all the ships when they enter in port, they have to, to fill the special, you know, medical forms and report if it was, you know, sick people on board during the last 40 days. Some ports are denying, you know, enter if, you know, the ships are coming to the, uh, to the certain countries. But then uh, what is definite, you should not stay too close. I think we already, you know, forget, you know, this habit of kissing, shaking hands, you know, and hanging, you know, the people. I really wonder if, you know, it will come back, you know, after a few months or it will somehow, you know, vanish. Uh, then you have to, you know, to remove this mask if you're wearing it. It should be removed and throw away because, you know, it will, uh, you know, collecting, you know, the microbes and the virus, uh, so, you know, on top. And then you have to wash your hands. Uh, the virus, it's not very virulent like, you know, many other diseases. Uh, you, we know that, you know, it can affect, you know, the people, elderly people. And uh, those who has, you know, different diseases, especially with uh, diabetes, obese people, or with uh, different type of cardiovascular diseases. Concerning those having asthma or allergies, we still have no evidence. Hmm. So uh, uh, a last uh, question that I'd like to uh, uh, just your sort of your comment on. Uh, one of the the the, the initial uh, uh, reactions of people is that uh, we need to be cautious as as shore based people because we might um, be the the we might catch viruses from these international people. But in in fact, many have have made the comment that it, it might be more likely that seafarers get it from us than we getting it from them, uh, or just as likely. And I'm wondering if you would have a comment on that that it's uh, us going to the ships. The, the danger is not only that we get we we get the virus from international people who have been in other countries, but that we might be the ones uh, giving it back. And I'm wondering uh, if that's a, a concern that the shore-based people, whether it be doctors or or uh, ship visitors, agents, whatever, they might be the the the, the ones uh, that need to be careful uh, as well. Look, for example, uh, in Pirems, as far as I know, the interview the mentions when you know they try really to reduce the contact from the uh, from the seafarers with the you know the port workers, and the agent has you know to drive these people by car from the ship from outside. Then you know the port workers will really have a limited contact with them. It's to be frank, it's really hard to tell who is more dangerous, you know, we or the ship being ashore or the guys being on the ship. Uh, remember when the infection started in China and it was still the people were scared of, you know, old people, you know, looking like Chinese, you know, and now it's uh, turned vice versa. Today, China uh, declared that it was no uh, new cases and look, uh, you know, the Europe and the other countries are burning. So the situation suddenly really changed and China closing the borders, you know, from Europeans now and not vice versa. So I'm afraid, you know, it, it's really difficult uh, you know, to answer this question, it's also, you know, it, it's very much depend when, you know, the ship was uh, sailing before, how many contacts uh, the seafarers had, you know, with, uh, you know, on uh, offshore. Also taking into account that we suspect that all our seafarers should be more or less, uh, healthy, you know, when they going to sail. And, uh, uh, well, we, st we allow the people with a um, diabetes number uh, type 
to you know to be on board and this is almost non possible with the diabetes type one which is you know really reducing the risk for them but it's still possible to catch the virus uh and uh, uh, it's possible that you are carrying the virus but you have uh, it's completely asymptomatic but you're still spreading them we're facing the problems in uh, the majority of the countries that we have not enough uh tests and uh, we have no rapid test which will be able to tell us you know immediately in 10 15 minutes you know that this person is uh, you know sick or healthy or he is a carrier which is making the situation more difficult uh, from the other side it's uh, not as contagious as for example body cellular or you know measles so we really can take you know the simple precautions like you know trying to be in distance cover your nose while you're coping immediately seek the medical advice the moment you feel any type of symptoms i think now everybody you know know the symptoms by heart can really uh, reduce the cases of you know complication of the world yeah. But this will definitely, this virus will get an impact to the, uh, the whole world, and especially to the, you know, from the part of the economic issues. Uh, you, uh, one of the questions you sent me yesterday was uh, sound would like that impact to the health of the sectors. Uh, the virus can affect the lungs in turning after the pneumonia to the fibrosis, but you know, uh, it's again, I will repeat it, and elderly people or really people with comorbid condition. But most probably, after all this situation, the mental health issues will raise, you know, among the sickers. What uh, I really, you know, concern because of this, uh, they're not aware of anything now. Their contracts, uh, you know, postponed. Those who, you know, are sure, okay, they can wait, but I cannot imagine then when they on a ship and uh, they deny, you know, you know, enter to the port in many ports, like recently one of the ports, they were allowed uh, just to enter Cuba because nobody was willing uh, to deal with them. And then we have also to think about the humanity we are, are able to take the measures and to accept uh, you know the sick people and i think that all the countries should especially in the ports create a special units they which will be able you know to help dr alona denishenko thank you so much for your time it's been a pleasure to speak to you and uh, hopefully we can hear from you again in the uh, the coming weeks and months I hope this will uh, obviously uh, be as short as possible, but uh, thank, thank you for, for folks like you and all your colleagues who, uh, who care for seafarers in the, in the best of times are already caring for seafarers, but certainly in this, uh, in this challenging time. Thank you so much for, uh, for all that you do and for being on this conversation today. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you.